this is Grandma Johnson, a <laughs> Victoria's grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Little Vicar's Grandma. Little Vicar's Grandma. So today what I want to do is to just walk you through using a basic sewing machine. This one I got at Spotlight. This is a Brother BM2600. <laughs> I started sewing hand stitching when I was quite young, probably about five. But I didn't start sewing on a sewing machine until I was about probably 12 because my mom's sewing machine was very dear to her. <laughs> this is a very basic machine. Best way to learn how to sew is to find someone who already knows how to do it and just sit down with them and, and have fun and sew. But I know that that's not available to everyone. So what I really want to encourage you to do is if you do buy a sewing machine, um, it'll come with instructions. Keep hold of your instruction book. And then, if all else fails, Google it. This is a very basic machine. It basically has um, <coughs> the knobs here for doing zigzag stitches and straight stitches and some of the <coughs> fancy things. Very rarely do I use fancy things. I use a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch, and that does everything I need to do. One of the first things that you have to do when you're getting ready to sew is you have to fill up a bobbin with some thread. So this is the bobbin and this is the thread. <laughs> you put the thread on its spool or spindle there. Then you just wet the thread just a little bit with some spit. <laughs> a little bit of spit. And that. Um, then you put the uh, thread through the hole in the bobbin and then you just spin it around two or three times okay then you take the thread and you put it over here around that little part of this knob this also serves to throw it put the thread down uh, there but we'll do that later and then you want to have the thread and Victoria you didn't put any power on the sewing machine <laughs> in order to have power going to your machine you have to have a cable. Oops, sorry. <laughs> ah. Okay, and the, and the cable has two parts to it. One is goes to the plug and the other goes to the presser foot. So you plug that into your machine, whatever your machine does, however your machine does it. This one just does it on the edge like this. And then that causes the presser foot to work when you just pop it down. Uh, oh, I have to turn it on first. There. Ooh, ooh. The bobbin thread goes to the back. That's kind of what I thought, but I didn't want to. <laughs> yeah, the bobbin thread goes to the back. <laughs> then you put this down on the floor like that. <laughs> and you use your foot and you make sure that this is a little bit taut. Okay, now. And you just start slowly, and the bobbin loads itself up. Woo! <laughs> it came off that thing. <laughs> Sorry, Victoria. <laughs> well, if that happens, then this is what you have to do. <laughs> I think a thread might not be the very best kind for this. <laughs> okay, let's go do that again. Around here, and then the thread is toward the back of the bobbin. Okay, so I'm going to just... So because that did that that time, I'm just going to put lightly put my finger on here because this is a wobbly uh, spool of thread. Yeah. So you can see that the bobbin is filling up with thread. Now the thing about putting your finger on top of the spool is it starts to get warm, so don't burn your finger. So the bobbin filled up. <laughs> So what you want to do when you're putting in a needle is you want the flat side of the needle to go. You see, I'm going to put this foot down so I got more space for my needle. But what you want to do when you put your needle in is you want to position it in there with the flat side toward the back on this particular machine. Now, whatever machine you have, and you can't put it in wrong because it won't go in until 
until you've got it right. So frontwards loosens the needle, back tightens the needle. This is how you buy needles. They come like this. There are, there are different kinds and lots of times when you're at the thrift store, if you're going through somebody's sewing um, bag or box or whatever, you'll find all kinds of needles and things like that. So keep your eye out for needles there because needles can get quite expensive. But anyway, they're sized, um, they're sized for what kind of fabric you're going to be using them on. So that's a whole different uh, ball game. <laughs> I usually just use one kind of needle. <laughs> How you thread the machine? You put your thread on the sp spindle. You put this through the back of the machine here. So you'll see the little guide. And on top of my machine, it tells you how to do everything. So you put it through there. Then you just bring it down through the first, around, up, and over. And then that brings it down to your needle. <laughs> it's not really this hard. I have to have the machine looking at me, Victoria. Now, if you cut thread to put through a needle, cut it at an angle, a little angle. And then it should just thread right straight through the needle. God, please let this go through. <laughs> Yay, I think it's gone through a little bit. Get through there, you. Okay, and then you've, you've filled your bobbin up with lovely things. Where it's pulling through like that. Okay, so it goes in like that. And it pulls, does it pull through like that? I'm pretty sure it does. Let me just give a little thing here and see. And then you just pull it like that. So this lifts up. Now, this is presser foot. It can come off and on too. There's a screw for it. And then there are all kinds of different kinds of presser foots. And this particular presser foot, it just re will release itself. And what that does then is then you can just make the needle do anything you want to. And the way to get this presser foot back on is you just set it underneath there and put that down like that. On uh, my brother 2600, um, you have a, um, a lever here that will back the stitches up. So when you get to the end of stitching something, you can just press down the lever and it'll just slowly start going back a few stitches. And that's a really good way to finish off a seam so that the thread doesn't uh, become unraveled. Push this button, it'll back back up two or three, let it go, and then it'll come back again. So after you put the bobbin in mine, there's this little panel that goes back on it to protect the bobbin from rolling out from the machine. <laughs> I guess maybe I should have practiced with my own machine. <laughs> I mean, there's, with sewing, there's so many things you just do from memory. You know, I mean, you just, you, you, you'll get so good at it that you'll just sit down at the sewing machine and just do all this stuff. But <laughs> just sit here and try to tell you how to do it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> that's me and my sewing machine at this point in time. <laughs>